In December 2023, the Royal Navy posted this advertisement on social media. It said, Unseen and unhindered, the silent strength protecting from beneath the waves. The Royal Navy is recruiting for a director of submarines responsible for highly classified stealth, elite operations and Trident, our nuclear deterrent. Candidates must be a member of the reserve forces or have served with the regular forces. Know someone who is up for the task? The Royal Navy was forced to post this recruitment ad for the role of Rear Admiral. A high position job for a highly trained individual that pays £150,000 per year or US dollars. Many senior members of the Royal Navy called the ad utterly shameful. The post surfaced in January at the same time when the Britain Navy reportedly decommissioned two warships for lack of sailors. That's not all, in the same month, something unexpected happened. In the Atlantic, off the coast of Florida, a test fire of a Trident missile turned out to be a dud for two times in a row. The missile's booster rockets failed and the missile landed in the sea close to the launch site. The much-anticipated test of UK's nuclear deterrent from HMS Vanguard was seen by Defence Secretary Grant Shapps. The Defence Secretary had earlier said he had absolute confidence in Trident's submarines, missiles and nuclear warheads. The embarrassment aside, the UK Navy's capabilities were completely exposed. The story that happened uh, in January the failure of a second test uh, of the Trident missile uh, after 2016, and this in front of the British uh, Secretary uh, of Defense uh, is an embarrassing situation. As Trident is uh, a couple system, a common US and UK pool of missiles or submarines, Ohio class in the US. Hangar of a British side, uh, it's a certain backbone of a British nuclear forces. The Trident failure report in February came after a British aircraft carrier, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, pulled out of a NATO exercise. The reason? The vessel was sidelined off the coast of Norway because of a problem with a propeller shaft. UK has the ninth strongest navy in the world. With origins in the late 16th century, it has had a head start over every country in the world. Today, it is in deep crisis. For centuries, Britain has sent its armed forces to fight major wars. They have included the Seven Years' War, the American War of Independence, the Napoleonic Wars, the Crimean War, the First World War and the Second World War. Britain's victory in most of these wars established it as a leading world military power. The British Armed Forces consists of the Royal Navy, a Blue Water Navy with 70 commissioned ships, together with the Royal Marines, a highly specialized amphibious light infantry force, the British Army, the UK's principal land warfare branch, and the Royal Air Force, a technologically sophisticated air force with a diverse operational fleet with both fixed wing and rotary aircraft. After the end of World War II, Britain witnessed decades of military spending cuts that affected its warfighting capabilities. Over the years, all three wings of UK armed forces saw the number of fully trained personnel shrink, with the British Army experiencing the biggest fall.
The UK's army is shrinking faster than expected. Latest figures show it stands at less than 76,000 soldiers. Last year, the army's total strength fell from 79,139 to 75,983. And at this rate, the UK could have less than 70,000 regular soldiers in the next two years. In fact, a European NATO general reportedly said the country can no longer even put a brigade in the field. Former UK defense officials claimed that the British government is refusing to publicize the current shortage of skilled military personnel to avoid scrutiny. This was after the British Ministry of Defense allegedly removed data from the public domain and withheld information from members of parliament permitted to receive classified briefing. All this comes in the background of a ferocious war going on in Western Europe. The margin between success and failure in a land campaign comes down to soldiers. In January, the head of the British Army, General Patrick Sanders, said UK civilians should be ready to fight in a hypothetical land war. He said the British military is currently too small to respond to the threats in a changing world. These statements underline what the British Army is going through. But the question is, how did it reach to this point? The government uh, we've had for the last 14 years has done many, many things wrong. One of the things that they did wrong was reduce the size of the budget for the defence sector and the military. And that has had, consequently, and that's had, a, that's had an ongoing impact and a, an increasing impact on our ability to protect the UK and to wage war. Even more worryingly, of course, is the fact that the current government in the UK simply hasn't responded. They've done nothing to increase defence spending since the riot, since the war in Ukraine began over two years ago now. The war in Ukraine is in its third year. Short of ammunition, the Ukrainian forces are on the back foot and forced to retreat in some areas. Together, We've committed nearly 700 tanks and thousands of armored vehicles. Kyiv's fight against Russia depends heavily on the funds and the weaponry that it gets from the West. The United Kingdom has been one of the leading donors to Ukraine, alongside the United States and the NATO nations. He said, Lord, thank you. <laughs> On the 9th of April 2022, the then British Prime Minister Boris Johnson visited Ukraine. He was the first Western leader to do so during the war. That visit laid the foundation for solidifying UK's solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Johnson went back again in June. By the end of June of that year, Britain had committed to over $4.5 billion in military and economic aid to Ukraine. It's yellow which denotes it's got high explosive content inside it. Johnson also offered to have Britain train up to 10,000 soldiers every 120 days. Continuing Johnson's pledge, current British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak visited Kyiv in January this year and declared that the UK will increase its support to Ukraine. The UK is leading international support for the armed forces of Ukraine for 10 years since Russia first invaded Crimea in 2014. It has trained over 60,000 new recruits since 2015 and provided almost 12 billion pounds in economic, humanitarian and military aid since 2022. 
the UK is providing both lethal and non-lethal weaponry and equipment to Ukraine. That includes tanks, air defense systems and long-range precision strike missiles. Take a look at some of the weapons the UK has given to Ukraine. Storm Shadow Cruise Missile, Challenger 2 tanks, drones, M270 multiple launch rocket systems and NLAW next generation light anti-tank weapons. So how good are these machines and can the supply be sustained? I mean, we will have to as a country. We, we have sent a lot, of, a lot of weaponry to Ukraine. We do need to continue to do that. And indeed, the whole West and the whole of NATO, we need to massively step up our gifting of money, but also of arms to uh, to Ukraine so that it can properly fight and push back Russia because obviously the implications for Ukraine, but indeed for the whole of Europe, are dire if we did not do that. And, you know, the Russia's war on Ukraine is not just an attack on Ukraine, it is an attack on the whole of Europe and the whole of the West. And it makes things very difficult for Europe as well because while well, America can give weaponry because they have huge stockpiles of weaponry that Europe doesn't have. Europe just A doesn't have that weaponry and B doesn't have the capacity to build it. We just don't have the factories. So Europe needs to shift to a, a wartime economy basically, both in terms of giving money and also in terms of its ability to produce its own weaponry its own, and its own um, military um, capabilities as well. UK has pledged almost 12 billion pounds or 15 billion dollars in overall support to Ukraine since February 2022. 7.1 billion pounds or 9 billion dollars of this is for military assistance. But reports now say the UK is running out of military equipment to send to Ukraine. Last year, the UK Parliamentary Defence Committee suggested that Britain's Ministry of Defence must rapidly grow local industrial capacity to speedily rebuild its weapon stockpiles. The report said the government will fail to achieve the desired level of high-intensity warfighting readiness without rapidly accelerating reforms to increase and sustain a thriving industrial base and to improve its offer to service personnel. It's interesting to observe why the British military have depleted over time. It seems to be contradictory at first sight because when you look at UK's budget, the military budget, it's around 2% GDP. But when you look backwards, to the last 30 years, because military budgets have to be seen in the longer run. There are ups and downs, e even extreme ups and downs, and there is a real lack of continuity, of continuous investment in the British Army, and at the same time, the British have been reducing forces. Therefore, the British seem to be in a, in a relatively difficult situation. In January 2022, Britain's PM Rishi Sunak said the UK will increase its support to Ukraine in the next financial year to $3.19 billion, an increase of $254 million on the previous two years. On the other hand, the former head of the British Army, General Lord Dannett, has warned about the UK under-investing in defence capability. So, what's the reality? It reduced military expenditure when it came in in 2010, so 14 years ago now. Of course, we've had, we're on our fourth, no, fifth, sorry, Prime Minister since then, um, because they've kept changing Prime Minister without um, fighting an election to do it. Um, but none of them have changed the, you know, changed back to a position where we've been investing more in the military. Indeed, I know we've lost a lot of capability in terms of um, the numbers of serving soldiers. Uh, and serving servicemen in the army, sorry, in the navy and the air force, you know, numbers have been reduced, but also spending on weaponry on equipment uh, has also been reduced as well. Uh, and indeed, we've lost capacity in terms of numbers of aircraft and uh, ships in the navy, etc. So we are in. A 
worse position than we were, which given the security crisis that, that we as Europe now face, given Russian aggression, is, is in retrospect, is, was a terrible decision. And then there is this war front. In the months of January and February this year, UK joined the United States to conduct joint airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen. The Iran-backed Houthis are targeting ships linked to Israel, and the western ships that travel through the important Red Sea trade route. The UK, like several other states, is critically dependent on the free movement of ships through the Red Sea and Suez Canal. But does that tell us something about the state of Britain's armed forces? UK's military ambition seems to be increasingly falling behind its ability. According to the UK Ministry of Defence, the British contribution to the airstrikes included four Eurofighter Typhoons that dropped precision-guided munitions on two targets in the Houthis' war. On the other hand, the American contribution was far more significant, involving strikes on 16 targets, according to the US Department of Defense. It does tell us about the relative capacity of the different military groups and the role the UK has played. So has the United Kingdom's participation in airstrikes on Yemen exposed its diminished military strength? I mean, our military is much, much smaller than, you know, infinitesimally smaller to that of the US. The US, as you know, has the, by far the world's biggest military. And that's why countries like the UK and indeed the whole of Europe have relied since the Second World War on the capabilities of the American military. And to this point, that has been a sensible choice to make. Sixth of June, 1944. In the largest battle armada in history, more than 130,000 Allied troops landed in Normandy. On March 18th this year, the Royal Air Force posted this video on X, titled 80 Days Until the 80th Anniversary of D-Day. The Normandy landings. This largest seaborne invasion in history took place on the 6th of June 1944. It was a combined Allied naval, air and land assault on Nazi-occupied France in World War II. The caption says, to support the largest battle armada in history, the Allied forces flew 14,000 plus sorties and had 5,000 plus aircraft under RAF control. 80 years later, such a situation is unthinkable. In 2023, British lawmakers said the Royal Air Force lacks capabilities in combat, air transport and early warning aircraft. The report points out that Britain has the smallest number of jets among the four major European military powers. Its fleet is made up of just 169 aircraft with Typhoons and F-35S. Here are some numbers. UK has 169 combat aircraft, while France has 231 combat-ready aircraft, Germany 214 and Italy 199. A public spending watchdog says Britain's armed forces face an equipment funding shortfall of £17 billion, or $21.6 billion, over the next 10 years. But UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is insisting that the armed forces have the funding they need for a more volatile world to face challenges posed by China and Russia. Our economies are seeing perhaps the biggest... In a recent US trip, Sunak pledged to increase defense spending by nearly £5 billion or $6.3 billion over the next two years to counter threats from hostile states. 
The UK government says £3 billion, or $3.8 billion, will be used to support joint military ventures with the US and Australia, besides boosting industrial infrastructure and servicing UK submarines. The remaining £1.9 billion, pounds, or $2.4 billion, dollars, will help replace weapons sent to Ukraine and improve the UK's munitions infrastructure. But the big question remains, can Sunak fulfill these pledges? UK is all set to hold elections by the year end. Analysts say that if the defense budget is not increased, the prime minister could even lose his job. There's also political pressure on Sunak right now, as his leadership is in turmoil in the United Kingdom. That pressure will intensify further after the local council and mayoral elections in which his conservative party or the Tories are expected to suffer losses. In the last two years, UK has had three prime ministers, but with limited funds to strengthen the military of an empire over which the sun once never set, can Britain save its armed forces in the coming years?